All right, folks, so what is going on today? We're going to be talking about the top 10 arch type boss monsters in the Yu-Gi-Oh history. Uh, I usually don't do these types of videos, but we're going to be trying something new today. And as always, if you guys um, do enjoy the video and if you do like this content, there's more along the way. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let me leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. Um, if you want to see more, I definitely got more. Um, if you also want to tell me your list, I'm definitely down to hear that. And we can come up with another list if you guys want to do a different list or update a list or something like that. So, yeah, we can definitely do all that. Then also, if you guys want to help the channel out, links are in the description down below. You guys can click and add. Either or is fine with me. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we get started, I'm going to give you guys my criteria. Pretty much how I rank these or pretty much how I came up with the rankings. Uh, number one, it definitely has to be meta relevant or has to done something in the competitive scene because uh, only a good boss monster would make the deck, you know, better and would give the deck pretty much, I guess, a little boost in ratings or, you know, would give it a win or something. Now, uh, Venomanaga, which would probably be top three, is not on here because what has it done in the meta? Nothing. has done nothing for the deck. It's a great boss monster, very hard to summon. And it did not do anything, did not make the deck better. The deck wasn't good upon release. So yeah, that won't be on here. Number two, once again, ties into number one. Has to be fairly easy to summon or basically very, very man uh, fairly manageable to summon. Um, once again, Venom Naga needs a trap card and Venom of Non to get destroyed for that to uh, happen. So yeah, once again, that would not be on the list. And number three, um, if the if the boss monster was not a boss monster upon release or the archetype uh, basically like BLS and thousand energy strips since those cards basically have archetypes based around them They won't be included on this list because when they were released but when they did their most damage They were not boss monsters of archetype. So let's go ahead and get started and at number 10 I would like to say is Gladiator Beast Herculinos. Now, if you guys don't know what Gladiator Beasts are or haven't seen Gladiator Beast in action or anything like that, well, I'm here to tell you guys a little bit of things today. Number one, Gladiator Beast Herculinos is a 3,000 beater that for the price of one card out of your hand, discarding one card, you can negate a spell and trap. So I don't know how to tell you guys how great that is, but coupled in the fact that this was back in 2009, 2008, 2007, it was pretty oppressive because you didn't have all these special summon stuff. And you usually have to rely on your spells and traps to get ahead in the game. And with this being out on the field, it was pretty much game over because by that time, Gladiator Beast will pick apart your whole field. You would be left with like one or two cards in hand and you're top decking into your third. <clears throat> and when I have a Herc also set by a War Chariot, it's pretty much over so I have effect negation and I also have spell and trap negation which was pretty much uh, the be all end all back when Herc was out once again combined with best yard in Gazarus you're able to just like I said take apart your opponent's field and just do and basically do with them as you please and also another bonus fact Gladiator beats one like probably I say eight or more straight YCS's where they weren't called YCS's back then but Shonen jumps straight because this card was just that good and also was a $300 card so that should be a testament to how good it actually was at number nine is the pioneer of structure decks machina fortress this card was so good upon release it took over locals it took over regionals it even even won a ycs which was peter chang he piloted this uh machina fortress deck or machinas to the top spot and he won because for $30, folks, this was the first $30 deck that you can buy. Oh, well, not first $30, but this is the first structure deck where you can buy basically three of them and compete. And Machina Fortress, if you guys do not know, was the card when it was released. If it's targeted by monster effects, you're able to look at your opponent's hand and discard a card. And if it's destroyed by battle, you're able to destroy a card on the field. So pretty much when you got this on the field, your opponent was not able to really capitalize too much on it because if they killed it by battle, you're able to uh, <clears throat> destroy a card on the field. And if they target it with monster's effect, you're able to look at your opponent's hand and discard a card. Uh, and for the cost of another machine monster and itself, you can keep special summon in this card. That's pretty good and pretty easy to me. So yeah, the pioneer of the structure that comes in at number nine. At number eight, we have Hyperion and Grapha. 
Um, I'll put these two at the same spot because while Hyperion is the better card, Dark World did better in the meta because they did win a YCS and sadly Agents never really got to that top spot. There was that number, they were number two, number three, number four. It was always topping, but they never did get that top spot. But like I said, Grapha, which is still being used today um, in the new Danger deck, um, it's, it, once again, if you discard it by a card effect, you can pop a card on the field. And if you want to special summon it, you can bounce a Dark World. Now, Dark Worlds are, weren't real, I mean, weren't that consistent. Um, and the, the bounce effect was, you know, you had to really use it on the, uh, I think it was Beige. Is that the one? Uh, yeah, the number, uh, the level four one that special summons itself. It really wasn't that consistent, but. Uh, <clears throat> Dark Worlds, like I said, did do better in the meta, uh, and they were good for their time. Uh, Agents, on the other hand, Hyperion, they were very, very consistent. Um, they were one of the first deck where they literally had only like three bad cards, and those three bad cards are normal monsters. Um, if you guys want to, uh, I guess, uh, peek into how that looks or how that deck was functioning, go type in Alistair Albans, um, him versus, I believe, George Orlando. It was Agents versus something. I forgot. Heroes. It was Agents versus Heroes. Go look at that deck. Trust me, that deck was just super, super powerful when it came out. And at number seven, <clears throat> a card that when it got released, along with some other cards, it did make it, it did boost this deck to tier zero. But once again, you cannot hate on the fact that how good it was as a boss monster at the time, which is legendary uh, Six Samurai Shi In. Uh, the synchro monster when it came out oh my god was it so it was just so good it boosted the deck to zero tier zero along with keys on along with the tuner he was just, and along with gateway you're just able to just just blow your opponent out the water and the fact that i can express with something i can have five monsters on board uh and like four set and you're literally and, and i also have a spell and trap negation and also like backed up with solemn warnings and solemn judgments and stuff like that it was very oppressive the deck was tier zero when it, um, Sheen did come out so even though Sheen isn't as i mean it's pretty much the same as herculinos but a little weaker it did the, the deck was tier zero so it is above all the other ones so that's why i have it at number seven at number six is a fairly recent card but the card is just very very good which is abc buster dragon my god is there any easier way to summon a boss monster than what this is the fact that a union hanger can get you <clears throat> a union hanger can get you into an abc buster dragon is already powerful in itself coupled with the fact that you can discard any card and banish a mon banish a card on the field and then on your opponent's turn you can also banish a card on the field but then it has the bonus effect a special summoning the three monsters you use to bring it out on the field and uh also did i mention the summon requirement i know i did but i just gotta reiterate that you can banish an abc monster from your field uh i, I don't know if it's the hand but it's, i know it's the field and graveyard and you can just special summon a but well i'm pretty sure it's not hand because that'd be real busted but yes hand hand or graveyard not no, i mean field or graveyard you can banish a b and c and then special summon a buster and then if it survives into your opponent's turn you're able to just tribute it get back three and then you can just basically redo the same thing again next turn for the price of what so one buster dragon equals the other two buster dragons in your deck which is already crazy so that should tell you how powerful this card is but like I said, the fact that it can banish a card, not destroy, but banish, and once again, coupled with the fact that it's 3,000 and it can uh, come and bring back three monsters, puts this at number six. I feel like this is a really, really great boss monster. At number five, I would like to put Masterpiece in Towers. They're pretty much, the, they did the same thing in their formats. Um, they're really pretty much put in stun decks, and then when you drop those, it's pretty much game over everybody called for it to get banned and towers actually got banned and masterpiece also got banned so yeah man masterpiece while um it is i guess easier to kill than towers i would say it you know it was no slouch on its own and on itself can kill a tower so that's that's pretty cool uh masterpiece if you guys i'm pretty sure you guys all know this but Whatever you tribute summon it with, it is unaffected by those cards. So if you tribute a spell and trap, it is unaffected by those. If you tribute a spell and monster, it's unaffected by that, and etc. etc. And towers for the cost of three Cleafor monsters, and the Cleafor deck is all pendulums, so this very easily. You can summon this 3000 beater. It's unaffected by any XYZ, uh, any rank or level below, I think equal, but below, yes, it's below 
uh, the what's and below the level of towers, which is 10. So that means we have to have a, either a rank 11 or a level 11 or, you know, rank 10 or 11 just to uh, affect this card with monster effects. And it's also unaffected by spells and traps. So that's just an added benefit. And it can discard a card out of your opponent's hand, which is also good. So yeah, those two, I believe, go in hand in hand because they pretty much did the exact same thing for both decks. Now, number four, I would like to say is Cosmo Dark Destroyer. Now, if you guys haven't played when that card was at three, oh my God, just, just, just thank God right now because that card is 3,000, untargetable, can pop a monster when it's summoned, and also when it dies, replace itself with another monster. I don't know. I mean, that that's a great boss monster to me. Think about it. And the fact that you can summon it with any level what level five or lower cosmo this a normal sum you can spell some of this card from your hand and once again coupled with the fact of cosmo town to add it back straw man and special summon it the fact that it can pop itself and get another uh, get a farm girl which can search it for 500 this card when it got released pretty much dominated the meta and pretty much it, the only it, it still has a couple tops here and now and then and the only reason why it's not dominating the meta now is because it's at one so once this card goes back to three you guys might see cosmos be a tier one because i mean you're not able to target is pretty freaking crazy um at number three a card that is still on the ban list but you cannot uh, uh basically you cannot hate on it her power which is shadal construct this card right here when it's summoned can send any shadal card to the graveyard and also can kill any special summon monster and the fact that you can use a light to summon is meaning that you can throw stuff like trick clown juggler uh uh, you can play it with light swords. You can play it in ink boat. You can play it with a snow. Just imagine, folks, what that Shadal construct would do right now. This is the perfect boss monster for Shadals because it does everything Shadals wants it to do. When it's summoned, it sends a Shadal. When it dies, it adds a Shadal back to the hand. Shadal, Shadal spell and trap. And it also kills special summoned monsters. And it's 2,800 attack. That's pretty beefy for a card that can do so much and it's it, it was just crazy and then once again it's still banned to this day so that's to tell you pretty much how good it was and at number two my personal number one but um when i did talk when i did talk about this with everybody else they was everybody kept saying pretty much the same number one same number one so i put that as number one but my number two is spiral sleeper this card is so goddamn good i don't even have to explain to you guys what how, how good spiral sleeper is i'm pretty sure most of you played through the spiral format this card right here, uh, when it's basically at its full power, basically when it's beefed up, it's untargetable, undestructible, and it can pop two cards each player turns up to two. So it doesn't have to be two, it can just be up to two. I don't think you guys know that how oppressive that is. That the fact that you can't set spells and traps, the fact that you can't build up a board because he's popping and he's, he's just 2800 and he's untargetable because of how the deck is, you know, how the archetype is built, how spirals are built. He's untargetable. Especially with resort he's untargetable and then you can just target itself and pop two cards and then it won't die are you kidding me i mean i don't know how better i don't know how better a boss was i don't i don't know why people think the first one is better but i can understand why they think the first one is better but sleeper to me is the best boss monster um archetype boss monster that has been released so before we get into our number one i would like to say a couple of honorable mentions so <clears throat> uh the first ones i want to start off with is the quantum xyz layer the super mega quantum thing while the card is very good it's not very practical to summon and it never really did nothing in the meta even though that is a boss monster that is a boss that's a really good boss monster you can shuffle stuff back unaffected by a whole bunch of unaffected by cards it was just great raid raptor ultimate falcon once again another one of those cards that are very good but once again never did nothing in the meta not particularly too easy to summon. it's kind of easy to summon but with to have his effect activated he's, he's not really that easy to summon another boss monster unaffected by stuff <clears throat> also ultimate conductor tyranno not really part of an archetype so um it's not really on here because it's not really part of an archetype and you know if it was it clearly would be top three um high priestess and Girga x and ophion those cards once again those are pretty good cards for the art site but they i mean high priestess was never the be all end all of spell books it was really spell book of judgment but high priestess was there um so that one did just missed out ophion once again was part of evil swarms but they just came out at the wrong time if, if evil swarms came out probably 
a format earlier or a couple months earlier it would have had time to shine but it came out with dragon rulers and spell books so it got overshadowed pretty quickly gear gear x um the boss monsters for gear gears which is pretty good but you know never it's not really that big of a boss monster dante once again when it got released it was a boss monster but if you look at uh the other cards on this list does it really stack up no zen mighty once again another one of those that don't really stack up when you compare it to other boss monsters um beatrice i don't know if you consider her a boss monster but you know once again it's very good but <clears throat> stack it upon everything else it's not really you know not, not, not really that not really her effect or stuff but the fact that dante or her can be i guess considered as a boss monster that's the reason why i left it off this list and also a hero fusions cyber dragon fusions and the zodiac exceeds broad bull and dryden once again very they're both pretty much hand in hand so yeah but then again Dryden, I mean, Dryden's effect really isn't like it's just pops one card and multiple cards on here do that and even better. Um, also, Cyber Dragon Fusion, Cyber End Dragon is technically the boss monster. Cyber Twin Dragon did more, but they never really propelled Cyber Dragons to number one. I um, mean, then the Hero Fusions, you could say Shiny, you could say Zero, you could say the one that shuffles everything back to the deck. It's a whole bunch of Hero Fusions, so once again, that's why I left that off. And another card, um, well, another two cards or three cards i would say tree toad great for frogs i just they just i i would say that's my number 11 because it did propel that deck to do very good but once again uh, uh it's just not as good as the other ones um also omega omega's a great boss card would have made top 10 but side frames is were not the deck it was mainly used in so I feel like that would be a cheat thing because it never really, I mean, it got used in side frames, but it was never, you know, that card. Um, and then also, last but not least, Tierra Misu. I mean, that is a boss monster. Now, I know some people can say that the level 5 one, but it, the rank 5 one, but it came out after Tierra Misu, and Tierra Misu is pretty good on its own. The fact that you could just shuffle two cards back into the deck is pretty great. So, number one, folks, and I'm pretty sure everybody thought about this, is Judgment Dragon. Um, when that card that card is literally a boss monster like when you think of a if you think of a deck this is probably one of the first monsters that pop in your mind judgment dragon for a thousand life points can blow up the whole entire field it's three thousand attack and at the end it mills for it and all it needs to have is four different names in the graveyard of light swarms you know how easy that is to pull off coupled with the fact of solar recharge charge a light brigade the fact that they all mill on their own do you know how easy it is to bring out a judgment dragon and just win the duel now just and light swords never really were the best deck when other decks were out such as teledad and gladiator beast but when those cards got hit it was definitely the best deck and then immediately got hit after that which was you know they only had a couple of months to shine but my god man judgment dragon is still a card that everybody hates to this day if um if it was i guess more consistent i guess it would still be but i think that this the, the game is not to the point where you need to blow up the field there's so many other things that blow up the field but judgment dragon in its heyday my god i mean it's probably like a 200 dollars card it, it was just crazy it, you needed three i could again I, I don't know how to get over the pay a thousand not once per turn folks remember that not once per turn can pay seven thousand life points blow up the field seven times pretty crazy so yeah that is the number one so thank thank you guys for watching i hope you guys did enjoy the video fairly long video I tried to keep it short but uh did not was not able to but yeah let me know what you guys think about this if you guys do enjoy this i definitely have more uh coming along let me know down below also subscribe if you haven't already like the video and also if you guys can uh help the channel out by clicking an ad or something like that or donating to the channel would be very appreciated see you guys tomorrow